Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, I'm gonna talk about all the stuff that's coming up, because we finally have uh, an inkling of when it's gonna show up. It's gonna show up on the 28th. A bunch of stuff, so that's what I'm gonna do. I hope you like the video. If you do, feel free to like, because uh, it helps out the channel. You can also comment down below if you have anything that needs to be cleared up, or questions, or you just wanna say, hey, whatever. Whatever you feel like. Or you don't have to say anything, don't worry about it. Anyway, let's get into the actual stuff now. So the coming up on the 28th, we've got the Caldea Boys 2020 events, the Caldea Boys Collection 2020, and the Fake Grand Order Survey Questions number four. That's basically the three things that are coming up. So let's start with the actual main event here. You can see here the Alien Spring Breeze featuring the Witch Delightful Companions and New Adventures. You only need to be clear for Fuyuki to um, be able to do this one. So even though it has um, Odysseus in the cover there, you don't actually have to clear the most recent um, Lost Belt to participate in it. But the event summary that we got here, I'm leaving, no you're not. The debate continues without end as tempers rose, arguments, and even insults were exchanged. Or at least that was the bitter story of heartbreak, one from long ago. The Greek island of Aeolia, said to be the home of a witch, this is the master and com company's destination and a mission to resolve a minute uh, singularity. There they meet a servant who has been robbed of his memories. Who took those memories from him and what might they have contained? This is a story of a love that should have ended. An unexpected reunion makes the Queen Witch's heart flutter once again. So yeah, we're gonna be getting our boy Odysseus' memory back. Uh, challenge event again. This is actually a very straightforward, um, just event. <laughs> it, it, it's really weird. It, it's just straight up a very regular event. It's not like anything fancy. There's no like, like here's the event guide. Chapter one drops this day. Chapter two drops this day, and on chapter six this goes down. And then yeah, the main quest and the free quests. Very simple. There's nothing like you need to unlock or missions to complete. As far as I'm, as far as I'm aware, anyway. So it's actually a very chill, laid back event. Um, there is a bunch of craft essences because it is Caldea Boys. As you can see, the two five stars, the three four stars, and the four four stars. There's a lot. Um, you see, an event bonuses every single male uh, servant, including the genderless and Orion, which is um, this one, which is technically Artemis but it is considered a male because it is supposed to be Orion originally. We'll do 50% extra damage during the event. Odysseus will deal 100% uh, extra damage during the event. And also the craft essence from Kaleo Boy's collection will provide drop bonuses for event currency. Makes sense. Uh, in terms of what they do, uh, I don't think I have the short list that shows exactly what they do. I don't think that they do anything spectacular though, but it's okay because you can actually pick one of them for free. Because that's what the Caldea Boys Collection 2022 is about. At the beginning of the campaign you'll be able to get basically one of these for free. That's why there's so many of them is that you get to have them for free and it always shows every single male servant I think, or pretty close to it. They at least make sure to always show the new dude ones. Um, so you can have the World Traveling Incognito, Blue Illusion, Exclusive Taylor. Dante finals a new chapter, High and Mighty Student Council Presidents, and Goku Freestyle. I thought that said God's Dead. No, that's God's Deal. Daddy's Letter Show, and Buzzer Beater. If I oh, Also, during the login, you will get... These are the items. Uh, you'll get tickets, which is nice. This craft essence, which is the wheat porridge. The Queen's Wheat Witch's Barley Drink. Restores 200 HP to enemies when attacking using the engraved card. It's a demerit. But inflicts poison 1,000 damage 3 turns when attacking using the engraved card. So if you have a poison unit that you absolutely love, that um, this would be great for them. I assume, anyway. And also the Da Vinci Workshop update. Only for players who did not own it, you can get this old one. The Caldea Boys Collection 2021 free craft essence. Hmm, let me see. Summoning campaign. Here's where we could probably... No, this is the Odysseus' actual banner. Here we go. So Royal Traveling Incognito. Invincibility two times. Critical damage 15%. It's not bad. Blue Illusion. Ignore Invincibility NP damage 25%. So it's okay. It's funny because ignore invincibility is one of those things that when you actually go against a challenge quest where you have to have someone who has ignore invincibility or else you just deal no damage, then it's kind of like this comes in super clutch. But before then, you're not really thinking about it. But this ability is actually very nice. I really like it. It's super good and it's 
still good, even though I think um, Castoria introduced a new a new form of invincibility that cannot be pierced. But anyway, exclusive Taylor, Buster 8%, NP overcharge 100% one time. Uh, Dante's is quick 8%, crit damage 10%, damage count 100. My student council is healing bonus 10%, NP gain 5%. The Suburb Turbulent Times is 1% NP each turn, critical damage 3%, NP damage 3%. God's Deal, plus 1 crit star each turn, NP damage is 3% and NP gain is 3%. Daddy Love Letter is Star Absorption 100%, NP gain 5%, and Buzzer Beater is Evasion 1 time, Buster 3%. So yeah, none of them stand out to me as like, I think these two are... Yeah, but even then, like compared to this one, I still think I would probably take... Because the ability to have two invincibility is nice, but I still think I would probably take, um... As soon as I can find it, where are the other similar effects? There we go, invincibility. I'd probably still take Volum, because it's three, and you increase your damage by a little bit. Even though it's not much. The crit damage is better, but... Usually when I'm using someone who grants invincibility, it's because I want to have as much invincibility as possible. But anyway. I digress. So the reason I say that is that basically you can pick whoever you want. If I had a suggestion, you should pick someone that is at least four or higher, because all the three ones you can get from the free-to-play banner. Um, but otherwise, do what you want. Get whichever one you like. Get whichever boy is your favorite. Get the Arjunas if that's the boy you want. Get the royal boys. All boys equal in the eyes of boydom. So, next. Okay. Let's actually look at Odysseus real quick. Um, so he's got two quick arts, two quick arts, two quick cards, two arts cards, and one buster, and the hits are four for quick, four for arts, three for buster, and five for extra, so pretty decent. Active skill is, uh, insight of the cunning general, B++, increases party's quick performance for three turns, increases party's arts performance for three turns, 500% chance to draw attention of all enemies of the party except one ally by 300% for three turns. Um... Okay, so it's like a reverse taunt. 20% quick, 20% arts. Single-minded love A. Charges on NP gauge, increases on crit star absorption for one turn. Grants self charm debuff immunity for five turns. The NP is 30% and it's 100%, 1000% absorption. And the Igus Divine Body Boundary Field A. Grants self invincibility for one turn. Increases on buff removal resistance for one turn. Increases on defense for three turns. Buff removal resistance is 100%, defense is 30%. And next we got the passive skill, which is magic resistance B, writing B, plus, and protector of the messenger god B, which grants self great witches pigify debuff immunity, increases his own arts performance by 10%. That's when you can't pig him, which is pretty good. And also of all the skills, 5, 5, and 6, so nothing too astounding. Pretty basic stuff right there. His Noble Phantasm is B++. It is the Colossal Trojan Horse of Obliteration, which is a pretty nice name. It's an anti-country Noble Phantasm. Three hits for arts. Removes all enemy defensive buffs, so this is one of the few ones that can actually review remove um, anti-purge defense, which is nice. Um, deals damage to them, so NP level is 1, 450% damage at level NP1, and at NP5 it's 750%. Increases on NP damage for one turn, 100%, 30%, and if overcharge is 500%, it's 70%. So, yeah, he is a arts writer. Um, he has the unfortunate, this is the same for, I think, every single arts writer, because I think it's my main problem with, um, uh, Nemo is that they already have two fantastic arts writers that are so good in the game that they were able to loop one is able to, was able to loop before there was really any concept of arts being good or bad or not it she just always has been able to do it which is Mo Ryder the summer version and then the other one is <laughs> Da Vinci who is amazing at what she does so anytime they are AOE, it's kind of like if you don't have either one of these, they're pretty good to follow up. I will say Odysseus is not limited, so he will always show up. So there's really no reason to go for him unless you badly want him. Um, just because there's always a chance you will randomly get him, similar to Achilles, which has happened to me at least once, which is why I think I have MP2 Achilles. Um, 
funny enough, I always get the ones that don't. I have like an MP3 Ozymandias, which makes me angry because he's single target buster and I had to go out and find the Quetz MP2 because it's so hard to get her to uh, give her additional MP levels. But anyway, I digress. If you like Odysseus, I think he'll do you fine. There's obviously better um, arts uh, writers out there, but he has some interesting gimmicks such as being immune to charm. And there are certain fights where you would 100% want to be charm debuffed, but unfortunately it is against Shudin, who is an assassin who would absolutely wreck his day. Um, but either way, always having like some kind of like silly thing like this is very helpful. And if you ever do go against a boss who is um, Cersei, you just have a way out of her being able to pickify you, which I assume would be very useful, because if I were to make a boss with Cersei, she would be pickifying all day, every day. That's just the way I, I see it on that. So yeah, and also this ability here to actually remove um, anti-purge defense is always nice. Being able to remove defensive uh, buffs before you attack is always nice. So it, this is another thing of like, it depends on kind of the fight. I think he's more built for challenging than he is for... Like, there's better farming options, but if you have a challenge that you want to do, I think he would actually come in pretty clutch if you had him. It's one of those units, one of those ones where you, like, you pull him because you want him, and people always say, like, man, why'd you pull for him? And then the super challenging challenge quest comes out, and you go, like, yeah, everyone else is having a hard time except for me, who went deep down on my dude. That makes it sound much weirder than I made it wanted it to sound. But anyway... That's what I feel about Odysseus. I think he's probably a pretty easy skip for most people, but if you like him, I think he's good enough to... <laughs> he's good enough. You should probably use a little bit of buffs, but it's only because there's so many other better AoE writers out there. They just keep releasing them, so... That's that, and I think that's it for the Kalea Boy stuff. Yeah, there's challenge quest, free quest, very basic stuff. The, the shop is, of course, basic, filled with stuff that you'd be able to get Odysseus's stuff up. And finally, for the questionnaire, this is pretty simple. Just make sure to fill out the questionnaire and you'll get three tickets. Everyone wins. Everyone's happy. Dum bum boom 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 Everyone wins. Remember to do it, because they actually do listen to the feedback, which I think is why we've been getting a lot of stuff earlier um, in the NA versions, because we keep asking for it, and as long as we keep asking for it, they will gladly keep giving it to us, I think. Especially now that we have uh, Lasagna Man. The, the Lasagna people are now in charge of Fago, and I think they'll be a little bit more listening than they were than DW was not Arthur's little sister but you get what I'm saying delight works all right I think that's everything everyone thank you very much for watching especially if you made it this far as always remember to leave a like comment down below tell me if you're gonna be summoning for Odysseus or not if you're just holding off on the boys I personally like the character of Odysseus but I don't like his unit very much and all I think it actually has it's a deeper rooted thing that I felt like I should actually make my own video just so I can lay it all out there and let it go. <laughs> let go of my feelings of what Fago has done to Odysseus. It's really weird where it's like all these other ones that I'm like, eh, whatever, real historical figures, do whatever, I don't care. Yeah, hell yeah, Thomas Edison is all the presidents in one, let's go, he's a lion, I don't care, I love it. And then they go to Odysseus and he's like, here's Odysseus, I'm like, hmm... Mmm, not a fan, but anyway, that's it everyone, peace out, have a good day, have a good night, and I'll see you next time, bye bye.